I'm gonna go ahead and get this fridge moved. Uh, there are two pads here that slide underneath. And if for some reason there's too high of a clearance there, we have some shims that we can use as well. But most fridge, 90% of fridges, you really don't need it. And then in our other bag, we actually have the vacuum. hooked up. And sometimes you can't get these all the way in, so you'll just kind of slide them in a little bit, lift the fridge up, and then you can kind of maneuver them back and forth to get them all the way back there. And then let's go ahead and plug it in, the extension, because they just kind of tie it off so it doesn't pop open. Okay, so we're going to start lining okay. uh, the edge here of the trim, the shoe, with the yellow frog tape. Okay. Yeah. So we use the yellow frog tape for the edge. It locks in the edge to keep paint from bleeding through. And it also, this yellow frog tape is sensitive to surfaces versus like the green frog tape it might have a little bit more tack to it. This will cause damage to floors. So we'll use this and then we'll put our grip right over the top of this with inner tape over the top. Okay, so can we get this into the corner here? Okay, you just want to press on it? And then okay. for edges okay. like this, you can just push it in there. What do you take? And then tear it clean. I'm as tight as I can to make sure that I don't get it up on the trim. But it's nice and tight all the way around. And then I just slide my neck in here. I already wiped that section down, but you don't want to take a rag, kind of wipe your woodwork off that you're about to tape. Let me tape it. So yeah, we'll go around, get the entire floor lined here, and then we'll get our grip right underlayment put on top of this. Okay, so we are laying down our grip right underlayment now. So um, we're gonna tack our inch and a half inner tape on top of our yellow frog tape and we kind of just get it extended basically as far as you can over here and we'll fold that corner in underneath and we'll bring this to a point right here I'll have to trim around this, this cabinet box right here but ideally I would like to have this underlayment 
just on the edge right there so that the inner tape that I put down is on top of this and on top of the yellow frog tape. So this inner tape is pretty forgiving. It's not super high adhesion, um, nothing like 2020 tape, but um, regardless, we'd like to not have it stick to a floor for too long because uh, we don't know what the finish is like and the yellow frog tape is just a little bit safer for that situation. So I'll go ahead and kind of get this trimmed out right here. Okay, so we're going to get the countertops covered now. Kind of the same concept that we do with the floor. We're going to use an inch and a half inner tape. We're going to line the edge around the countertop, the bottom of the countertop. Then we'll get our underlayment put over the top of it and tack it on top of that piece of tape. So, let just get it up tight there. I'm using the roller as the guide, kind of. Putting it up there and then lightly pressing and then pressing a little bit, a little bit harder as they go across it, a couple more passes. So we're just going to get this laid out over the top of this countertop. We're going to line up one edge, two edges actually, roll it out, and then we can either fold it or cut it on the other edge so we're not cutting it twice. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this uh, oven maxed off. Again, we're just going to kind of line the edge. We're doing a um, yellow frog tape again. Get a nice clean edge. Now, with it's impossible to get a piece of tape back in there, so we're going to actually want to slide in a piece of paper as far back as we can. And you might be able to kind of move it back and forth to be able to do that, the, the oven, just to, enough to get a piece of paper back there. Um, We'll never move uh, a gas stove. I don't ever want to move a gas stove with an electric stove. In some instances, we can move it with the appliance airlift. Um, we just chose not to move this one. Instead, we're going to mask around it. But 
with an electrical one, we can just kind of pull it back a little bit and unplug it. But a gas one, I don't want to have to deal with uh, unhooking a gas one. So we'll go ahead and get this get this mask off here. So I'll grab some paper. I will try my best to kind of get this slid back in here. You know, kind of, you don't need much room. It just slides back in there. And then we can just kind of tack it down in a couple of spots. It's nice using um, yellow frog paint for this situation just because it's a little bit more sensitive. Finish on there is stainless steel. You just want to make sure you don't screw it up. a little bit flexible so you can push it in a little bit. And then what I'll do is for the rest of this I'll get a piece of plastic, 72 inch plastic and I'll run it and I'll bring it. Then we're going to mask off this microwave. Same kind of concept that we do with the stove here, where we're just going to take some paper in behind the microwave here. We don't need it far back in there, just a little bit. I'm going to cover this whole microwave with paper because there's not a lot of surface area in here. And then on the bottom edge here, I'm just going to run a piece of tape. Piece of paper back in there. Hopefully. Too tight. So if it's too tight, I'll just run a piece of tape here and just get it nice and tight. Okay, so now we want to get this dishwasher masked off. Now, you notice a lot of these dishwashers, depending on how they're set, there's going to be a little slice right here that's exposed wood that we want to get painted. We may have to brush and roll that. We'll just have to kind of see how it goes. But there is a rubber seal right here as well that's going to get painted on it. So you want to make sure you open the dishwasher up and get all this stuff masked off. 
so that when you spray, you're not gonna get any overspray into that area. So I'm just gonna get this cover right here. Up here, get that seal covered. This side. Bread, so I'm going to mask that off with. Yellow frog tape. to attack your tape on too. Right here. And then you also want to make sure that your plastic is secure and it's not waving around because as you're spraying it'll blow this plastic around so kind of get that tucked up under there and then track down on it here as well. That is masked off, and if I have to, I can open it up. Just check my edges. I have a little bit exposed right here. Make sure we're good. Pushed up all along there. And again, just before spraying, just check this out. Make sure there's no holes in the plastic before you start spraying. Um, on a cabinet box like this, if we're painting these cabinets but the customer doesn't want the wall painted, then we have to get this masked off. Um, if, if they are gonna end up painting the walls, then we can just go ahead and spray this corner. We'd have to mask off the backsplash and everything else. But if they're not intending on painting the walls, then we're gonna wanna mask this off. And you don't wanna necessarily mask this right tight into this corner. You want to back it off just like a sixteenth of, of an inch away, expose like a slight bit of the wall color. And then after we're done masking it, before the final coat of paint, we'll get some caulk put in that corner, spread it into that joint, and then we'll paint it within five, ten minutes, and then right away we'll take that masking off. That way we'll have a nice clean line. You would have to paint it right away, you don't want to wait long, longer than five minutes because otherwise the will actually dry it on the tape and then when you pull it off and it'll, it'll fray it up kind of make that joint look weird so I'll just kind of show basically how you would end up doing that and ideally you'd, 
you'd want to be using yellow frag tape for a sensitive surface because we don't want to pull the the wall paint off the wall and this green frog tape is a little bit stickier so you'd have that chance i'd also want the customer to have a little bit of the wall paint left over and set that aside so that we could do touch-ups if we had to so you see a little bit of the green kind of showing through that's good now on this joint right here, there's a little bit of grout exposed. That's where I take a little piece of tape off and uh, get that covered because you don't, you're not going to end up caulking that where the grout is. You want that tight into that corner right there, like that. So that's actually kind of backed off. So I end up caulking that line and then top coating that and take it off right away. So now that the kitchen has been completely masked, floors covered, countertops covered, all the appliances are covered, we're going to get all the doors and drawers removed and labeled. So we're going to take the hole on the back side of the hinge or whatever the hinge covers up and we're going to label those. After you label it, you're going to want to put a piece of tape over the hinge hole. Um, we're going to start on the upper left side and work our way from left to right on the upper cabinets. And the first cabinet is going to be labeled U1. Then the next one is U2 and U3, U4, and we'll just kind of work our way around the kitchen. Um, if we have a double pantry door that kind of covers an upper and a lower, that will still remain a U as in an upper. Uh, the lower cabinets will just be L1, L2, L3, L4, and work our way from left to right around the kitchen. And same thing with the drawers, it's gonna be D1, D2. Um, you're not gonna have a hinge to label it with, but you're going to have part of the cabinet or the drawer box that's going to hide. Um, so you can just label it and put a piece of tape over it. Most of the time we can remove the drawer face from the drawer box by just undoing some screws in the back. If that's the case, you just take the drawer box and set it aside somewhere else in the home, somewhere the homeowner is de uh, designated where we can put it. But in some cases we need to uh, mask off the box because the the face will actually be attached to the drawer box. So you just mask it off with paper and spray it on its own. The island will get labeled I1, I2, I3, I4. A lot of times the islands are accented, so it's you know important to get those labeled correctly. I'm gonna get into how we remove the drawers. Um, each drawer can be built a little bit different. Uh, this drawer has a permanent guide right here fixed to it and it has just one wheel this is how most drawers are built and this one also has a face frame that can be detached from screws on the back side here some drawer boxes are fixed into this face plate right here so if that's the case we would take this drawer box out we would end up masking this off we would bring this entire unit most likely back to the shop with us because uh, we wouldn't be able to remove this face frame. So ideally we want to be able to remove this, but if we can't, then the, that's what happens. Now, there's also s scenarios where it's, it's a screw in, but like on this one, there was double-sided tape used on this. So you're not gonna be able to pull this off even when you unscrew it without probably ripping the box apart a little bit. So if that's the case, you unscrew it and it's not easily just coming off, then you'll just treat it as if it was fixed into the drawer box. So to take this out, like this box will just stop right here. You'll have to just kind of lift it up. You just lift it up on the edge a little bit and pop it out over that edge. So the customer will, our instructor is instructed to leave these empty when we get to the job site. So this will be empty so that you can kind of get in there and, and uh, unscrew the faceplate. Once that faceplate is unscrewed, you would take this box and put it into a, a designated area that you've already discussed with the, with the client somewhere else in the home because these would be taken off site and we're going to leave these inside the customer's house. Now you have the guides back here that need to be removed. Um, so really it's just a matter of taking this screw out right here. Once that screw is out you should be able to just pop this and leave this inside this box right here. So we know that that drawer guide 
stays on that left side because sometimes it can get kind of warped or whatever and it's best to leave that same exact guide in that spot. And then this screw right here, we'd want to put into a plastic baggie and label this as drawer guide screw. Um, in some cases, a customer will have, you want to stand up a little bit. Um, some cases a customer will have a guide that's built like this. This is a, a system where it allows kind of a soft close. So it's a little bit different. Um, this guide would sit in, in this box like this and it would be screwed in and it would come out like this. And then what happens is there's a tab on this side. So I'll show this side right here. There's this black tab right here. You just have to lift up. As soon as you press that up, that will slide out. And that this, this will be the box that's attached. This would be what's inside of here. So you'd want to remove this and put this inside the, the cabinet box while we're painting. And then this is the piece that's going to be attached to the box, um, to the drawer box that you'll, you'll just leave on. It'll be sit, sitting there attached and you'll put that aside with the customers, the rest of the drawers. So that's kind of how we take care of the drawers. Okay, so now I'm going to take this door off. Um, based on the diagram that we've already shown you, this door will be labeled uh, U1, U2, U3, so on and so forth, so all the way to the end there. And then this one will be L1, and this door would be D1. So again, with the doors, or the drawers, you would take this off and label on the back side of this. If you can't uh, take this off, then you would label on the back side of the drawer box, box itself. Um, so you know which spot it goes back into. So I'm going to take this door off. Um, I'll just go ahead and get this bottom hinge taken off first. Now there's a bunch of adjustments and stuff on this um, hinge style. This is called like a European hinge style. So um, we'll get into what these adjustments mean when we reinstall the doors. You need to make any adjustments right now. You just need to take the screw off that's attached to the cabinet box. So I'll get this taken off right here. Get that bottom one taken off. And now this top one. And then I'll go ahead and get that laid out there. Now these are the hinge screws. Each screw type will have to get put into its own bag and labeled. So I'm going to take the, the plastic bag out, put it into the hinge screw bag, and just label it hinge screw on this bag. Just write it with this marker. So we have hinge screw and then we have door screws. I would pop these off now. Um, these hinges are usually a little bit harder to take off when they're extended. So it actually bring in there that tightens it. So this one, because of the fact that the hole, these were drilled at a later time, they don't have that so much, but on some doors you'll notice that um, as the, as the ex extended, it won't actually pop out. So you'll have to kind of pull it in and pop it out. So I'll take this one out as well. And this is the upper, this is the lower, and that does matter. So whatever kinds of adjustments that were made to this already, I would like it so that when we reinstall these, we don't have to make these again. So I'm going to put this hinge up here, knowing that that's the upper one and this one down here. If it isn't, if there isn't uh, shelves here, you would take this lower one and put it right here, and this upper one and put it on the back side, so you know that this is the upper and this is the lower. Um, the client is instructed that they have to remove everything from the drawers, but they don't necessarily have to remove everything from the cabinet box. We do want a few inches of room here because we do have to mask this off here. Um, and it, the stuff needs to be out of the way. So this wouldn't be okay. We would want a few more glasses and stuff taken out so that we have a little bit of room here. 
um, and then also room for these hinges to stay in here. So uh, that's kind of how we take care of the doors. Okay. All right, so now I would um, go ahead and get the hardware taken off. This screwed back in here. We can throw these in the plastic bag too. And then as far as labeling this door goes, you would just take your marker and label it here U1. U1. And then we're going to take a piece of tape because we're going to end up painting these cabinets. And uh, just put it right over the top of that so it protects it. So when we're done, we can just go ahead and take this off and know where we got to put it back up. Asking off the boxes for something that's going to get painted by hand. The boxes are going to get brushed and rolled. Um, we don't go through the process of masking off the whole opening. We're just going to mask off this bottom edge just to make sure that when we paint here, we don't get any paint on this edge right here. And then we're going to mask this edge off right here so that when we're painting this edge, we're not getting paint on the shelf right there. So. Pretty simple, you just get your tape lined up. Sometimes this bottom edge will be flush with this. So it'll be a little bit trickier. You kind of have to make your own line. This isn't that case. This actually is raised up a little bit. So a little bit easier. And then just get that pressed down. You probably want to take an inch and a half knife, especially if it's flush with that edge and get it pressed down along that edge. So you have a nice clean line. And then here, we're just going to take a few pieces of tape and get it pressed over that edge. You want to make it easy on yourself to pull this off after you're done so you don't necessarily have to seal this down. You just want this edge right here sealed so that you can pull this off after you're done. Here. Okay, so this box is prepped.